From the moment that Steve Jobs walked onto the stage and introduced the iPad, I, like many other artists, have dreamed of using it as an amazing art tool. A dream that keeps getting crushed over and over and over again. The iPad, it's great for a lot of things. There are hundreds of drawing apps and even more styluses. Styli? Whatever you call them, I've tried out dozens of them. Now I love me some iPad, but as a professional drawing tool, it really doesn't have any place in my workflow. So enter the next great hope. This great little new app called AstroPad takes a totally different angle on drawing for the iPad. This is how it works. It mirrors your Mac screen, so it lets you draw directly on your Mac screen using your iPad. Kind of like a Cintiq. So whatever you like to draw in, Photoshop, Illustrator, Manga Studio, whatever, if it's a Mac program, you can now use it on your iPad. So the big question is, does it work? Let's start at the top. Let's talk about the software. The setup was amazing. So I downloaded the iPad app and then I downloaded a second piece of software directly to my Mac. As soon as I turned on my Mac software, it immediately identified that my iPad was on the network and it was running the same app. As soon as I clicked yes and said yes, I'd like to run the demo, boom, I was drawing like that. It took 20 seconds from the moment I opened the app until I was drawing. This is one of those features that because it works so seamlessly, most people aren't even gonna notice it as a feature. I've used stuff like this before that connects my phone to my computer and does that kind of thing and it just doesn't work right. For example, the PlayStation 4 software and Vita are designed from a hardware and software level to work like this and they don't work this good. But it doesn't end there. I would go so far as to say that this is one one of the best designed pieces of software I've ever used. Usually when you set something up like this, whether it's a Wacom tablet or any kind of piece of software there's where there's any kind of complexity like this, there's a big wizard and it walks you through all the settings and everything you should do before you should start drawing. But this software, I would call it opinionated. I don't say opinionated in a bad way. What I mean is that they have decided what the best settings are and they just throw you into it. It doesn't mean that there aren't a lot of settings to play with. It just means that they're hidden until you need them. They're easy to find. But right from the get-go, it's optimized and ready to roll. There's something really wonderful about just opening up an app and starting to draw on it and have it work without you having to ever really think about it. So I did start playing with the settings. Immediately, I started resizing the window to kind of fit my whole screen, and I saw why they had chosen 1024 by 768 is my core drawing area. That's just tends to be where it works the best and where you get halfway decent accuracy. So overall, the software, that's the good part. Now for the rest. The biggest drawback here is you're drawing on an iPad. The iPad was designed for your finger, not a stylus. So that basically means that drawing on it is still a fairly inexact science. So when you compare it to something like a Wacom Cintiq tablet, the tip of your pen is mapped to one pixel on that screen. That is the center of the brush that you're using at any given time. The iPad screen is a capacitive touch screen. It's designed for you to have to hit multiple pixels at one time in order to be recognized as a touch. This isn't a bad thing. I mean, the iPhone and the iPad are designed to be used that way. It actually makes them better products, just not necessarily better drawing tools. It's also why when you look at many of the styluses that you can get for the iPad, they have a wider tip. All right, so here was my test. My setup is a MacBook Pro. It's about three years old. It was pre-Retina. And the iPad I was using is a first generation Retina iPad. The stylus I'm using is this one. It's the Adenit Jot Classic. I like it because it has that fine tip on it, but it also has this little rubber thing so you can kind of get a feel for where the center point of your stylus is when you're drawing. So first up, I ran it through Photoshop to see how it worked. I start much of my drawing sketching, so I started there with this as well. It took a little bit getting used to, but over time I started to get in the flow of sketching and it worked out pretty well for me. One thing I ran into is that oftentimes when I was putting my palm on it, the detection of what was my palm and what was the pen was a little bit spotty. This led to me drawing a lot of lines that I didn't really want to be there. That, and sometimes the programs did some funky multi-touch stuff that I just wasn't expecting at all. Something I would have to totally get used to is not being able to rest my palm on the surface while drawing. And of course I ran into the famous iPad lack of accuracy. That made it okay for sketching and kind of roughing things out, but not for the, like, fine detail work that I was going for later. I personally like my ink lines and that sort of thing to look really tight and really clean and polished. It's just really hard to do that here. Also, the iPad didn't always detect when my pen was on the screen right away, so it might take a couple pixels before it started to pick up and draw the line. And of course, fast drawing sometimes worked and sometimes didn't work, so I had to kind of slow down everything I was doing and be more intentional about it. Now, this is where some of the other settings come into play. For example, there's this cool magenta line that you can actually show on the screen to show where your pen 
is and when it's activated so you know when that touch is actually registered and where it started and where it went. There's also the little slider on there that lets you decide whether you want to draw faster or have more zoom control. The app has also added a bunch of shortcut features that you can pull out in the side tab. I can change between a brush and an eraser or change my brush sizes directly from the app without having to jump back into uh, Photoshop. There's also an undo and a redo button in there. Those didn't work for me, but that's probably my fault because I remapped those buttons so I could have multiple undos. AstroPad also supports two styluses right now, like pressure sensitive styluses. One is the Adnot Jot Touch 4, and the other is the Wacom and Twist Creative, Creative Stylus. Word on the street is they're working on more, but don't fear, you can use your dummy stylus just like me. Any iPad stylus is gonna work with this thing. Once I started to feel comfortable in Photoshop, it was time to move on to Adobe Illustrator. I didn't expect Adobe Illustrator to work very well, and I was not disappointed. Illustrator relies on hover a lot in order to get the fullest out of the pen and arrow tools, and unfortunately on a touch interface, you just don't have hover effects. Now Adobe did release an update to Illustrator which introduced a touch mode, but Currently, that's only available for Windows. I did wind up getting some decent line work out of Illustrator once I got my brushes and everything set up, but editing those brushes was a different story. But hitting all those little touch points and things like that, even when I was zoomed way in, just was really tough. So that brings me to one other thing, which is Mac OS in general. My current primary drawing tablet is actually a Surface Pro 3. Windows 8 is a touch-based interface, and so overall, it's pretty usable, even though it has its own set of problems. But OS X was never meant to be used that way, and it really shows. I'm not gonna get into all the details because that could be its own video unto itself. But I will say this, anybody who's predicting that there will be a new MacBook Air introduced any day now that has a touch screen does not understand all the changes that have to happen to the Mac OS interface in order for that to get pulled off. And since OS X just went through a major overhaul just in the last year, I don't see them doing it again this summer. So let's wrap this up. I could potentially fit this new piece of software into my workflow. In a pinch, I could see myself roughing out some sketches in Photoshop and then going into Illustrator and creating some basic line work. And then jumping back to using a mouse in order to do the rest of my cleanup work and that sort of thing. It's not ideal, but I could see it happening. For me personally, I'm probably not gonna pay the $50 for it though. Since I'm already set up with a pretty good tablet and I can do everything I need on that tablet without jumping between modes, I don't really need this. If you don't have a Wacom Cintiq or something like it, this might be a decent option. Obviously the accuracy is a problem, but for 50 bucks, that's not bad. There's also a free five day trial, so it's totally worth trying out and seeing if it works for you. So thank you very much for watching this review. If you enjoyed it, check out some of my other videos. I've got a review of the Surface Pro 3, and I also have some of my other video podcasts that I do every couple weeks. Thanks.